I'm Rosella Vanon. I'm a beauty photographer, retoucher and educator based in Norwich. I um, got into photography just by borrowing my dad's little compact camera for a holiday uh, and that got me really interested in taking pictures, something I definitely wasn't interested in before. I was uh, always running away and uh, hated being photographed. Um, and that uh, just snowballed from there. I, Saved up, I got my little camera, started taking pictures of everything, mostly nature at first, um, and then gradually got into photographing people because I am very attracted to faces, obviously now. Um, so I um, kind of shifted from nature, just kind of holiday landscapes really, into um, more kind of macro nature and then to portraits. That got into fashion and that gradually got me to beauty photography, which is what I really love to do now. I am best known for, I think, my um, the, 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 the tones and the colors in my images, which is something I pay a lot of attention to before I shoot, so that a lot of planning goes into um, the tones of the makeup versus, you know, together with the tones of uh, the skin tones and any um, kind of color grading that goes into post-production, um, as well as, I guess, um, my use of gels sometimes as well in my lighting setup. My choice of models, perhaps, is really difficult sometimes to pinpoint what people see in your work that stands out because you just do what comes naturally to you in, in the way that you like to do it. Every single kind of phase of photography that I went through really shaped who I am and what I do now in many different ways. Even before I got to doing photography, I, was, uh, I studied advertising and that really taught me the basics of Photoshop. So even without even knowing that I was ever going to get into photography, I already had a good uh, starting point knowledge of uh, Photoshop, which really helped me down the line. Uh, photographing landscapes and nature really taught me to take my time, think about my settings and also think about not just what I'm photographing but what's behind and perhaps even kind of moving around the subject to find the right angle to shoot them from. Um, which obviously translated into beauty photography, whereas the background is perhaps plain but getting the subject to move herself or himself to give me the best angle to photograph them from because angles change everything. So every single thing I've done and fashion taught me about makeup and hair and how styling can add or not to a shoot, you know, depends how it's done. Um, taught me how to work with a big team, you know, how to collaborate, how to direct a big team of people. Every single thing has helped me get to where I am today. I've always been browsing online a lot, so using websites like Pinterest and Instagram, and I am more, um, inspired by single images that I would just kind of get and put in a mood board and be inspired by the lighting or just the pose or just in general the color grading and the tones that were used in a shot. Uh, these are always elements that I'm attracted to. Lighting, colors, it's, it's my thing. So anything that's got these elements in a beautiful way and it can be a painting, you know, it can be a screenshot from a movie where the lighting is just so beautiful and um, uh, that somehow inspires you to do something similar on set. I would say one piece of advice that I'll give to uh, photographers that want to get into this side of the industry is to um, take their time and that means either uh, both on a shoot, so at the beginning of a shoot, take your time with your choice of uh, lighting, uh, your choice of modifier, your choice of camera settings and make sure that you are 100% happy with them before you move on and actually start shooting. Um, that's often something that we feel pressured to do quickly at the beginning of a shoot um, and understandably you can't take five hours to do so but if you um, rush it and you're not actually happy with it you're going to regret that big time down the line. Um, so that's definitely a piece of advice that I gave and also to take your time in terms of allow time, allow days where you can just shoot without any, any pressure, without any client, just, you know, get your team together or just your subject together, regardless of, you know, depending on what you do, if you do work with the team or not, and just um, experiment and test different lighting setups, perfect your lighting setups, perfect giving direction, and just even to just be more comfortable uh, working with people because I felt that when I went from nature photography to portrait it was awkward at times because you had to 
actively direct the subject, deal with their moods, with them being thirsty, with them you know, wanting to sit down. And that wasn't something that I was dealing with when I was photographing flowers. So that's all, that's all something that practice obviously helps. One breakthrough moment for me was when I had a conversation with a photographer's agency and they looked at my portfolio and they advised me to shoot more fashion and to shoot more fashion on location specifically because it was something that my portfolio was perhaps lacking at the time. And although I did enjoy shooting fashion, I was already shooting beauty also, and I felt really kind of drawn towards beauty, but I followed their advice. Um, and I still to this day know that they know the market extremely well, but I, I knew what I, my heart, really wanted to do. So although I followed that advice, I really felt like um, it wasn't the right thing for me to do. Like, I did that to a certain extent, and then after I just reverted back to shooting lots of beauty to make up for it. Uh, and that really told me, it showed me what I was really, really drawn to without thinking about there's more client in this field as opposed to this other, this field pays better than these other. Um, and that was a, definitely a good um, kind of, um, I would say a, a, a personal breakthrough for me. Uh, I was at the time when I got my first um, kind of uh, bigger gig, paid gig, was um, I was shooting a lot of personal work. I was shooting a lot of editorial work. So I was doing a lot of work that was more like an investment as opposed to uh, work that I was getting paid for. Um, I was, I love doing that. So the fact that you are not perhaps immediately getting paid for what you're shooting doesn't mean that it has less value for me. In fact, it has more value because it allowed me to put together a solid portfolio of work that I that really showed my vision and what I could do my skills my lighting skills my my kind of team working skills and so forth and that is what I think clients really are looking for um, to have to see a cohesive portfolio and know exactly that if they pay you you have the ability to recreate that work time again Going from nature photography to photographing people was definitely a bit of a, of a shock to the system. I am a naturally uh, kind of a, an introverted person. So I, you know, photographing flowers and not having to speak to anyone, I was actually in my zone. Uh, but I'm really drawn to people. I actually really like to work with people. The part that was difficult to deal with at first is having to direct and coordinate everyone. And sometimes it's one person, sometimes it's 10. And obviously, it, it's a different challenge each, each time. Um, what really got me comfortable doing it, and you do get comfortable doing it actually very quickly, and the, it's simply the more often you do it, the better you get at it. And there is no way around it, because when you are on set with different people, and you are the photographer, most of the time you are the one that co coordinates everyone. So you just, you just have to do it. And if you do it, and you also enjoy the people that you're working with, what you're shooting, it will become naturally, it just feels less, less of an effort to kind of break the ice and, and then in time it will become second nature. So normally a client would get to me um, with um, a, uh, an idea, sometimes a basic idea, sometimes they have already thought, you know, past the initial idea. Uh, but I really actually enjoy it when they come to me with a very basic idea because then I can help them uh, develop the idea and that, that's actually what I'm here for because I can tell what lighting could work with a certain subject or with their brand even, you know, based on what they're selling and who they are. Um, what kind of color scheme could work based on the values that perhaps are associated with their product depending on the product. Um, so I love when I can advise the client this way and 99% of clients would appreciate being advised this way because they've got lots of other things to worry about than what kind of backdrop we're going to be using on a shoot. Um, and um, I think it's lucky at this point that most people will come to you and um, also ask for your opinion and not just kind of present you with the final kind of um, idea. Um, and that's usually, the progression is usually from the initial idea, so perhaps knowing what product we are photographing to um, what kind of, in general, what kind of lighting they're looking at, you know, some pro some for instance, some beauty brands really like harsh lighting to really highlight the texture of the skin. Others like really soft light. So then just with these starting points, then you can start thinking, okay, then my lighting setup based on this and based on how many subjects I'm photographing can be this or this. 
And so you can present this idea to the client. And then you can think about colors. So think about, um, is the product that I'm photographing already colored in any way? And if so, then what other colors in terms of backdrops, styling, makeup could work well with that. It's a step-by-step -step where you start from a general idea and obviously narrow it down more and more and more. Normally, when we work for a client, the client already has a rough idea of what kind of face they want because the face is a big part of the brand at that point. The face is representing the brand. So the client might have chosen the models at the same time that they've chosen the photographer or shortly after, or they might be, especially if they are a newer brand, whereas they don't have any kind of um, previous brand material that they have to try and match. Um, so they might actually ask for the photographer's opinion that that's happened sometimes. There are some agencies that I, um, and it's, there's quite a lot because in London there are, there's a lot of modeling agencies and some that I've worked with many times over the, the last decade. And um, in, in beauty photography, the model is everything. It, it makes a massive difference choosing a face over another. So the choice of model is something that has to be done carefully, whoever does it, the photographer or the, uh, the client. Um, I really like to take care of the model choice because that it's a piece of the puzzle for me. So I can, I can think of, I'll say I've got this product or this makeup to showcase and I think it will work really well with this type of face and that will work really well with this type of lighting and that will work really well with these colors and that's how it builds up for me. Uh, and that's exactly what's happening today. Uh, uh, today, everything started from the model. So I've come across this model um, just before this shoot came to be and um, I loved the way she looked. I, I just loved her tones, everything about, the, uh, about her and her face. So I thought, um, Let's give it a go and see if we can get her for today. We were lucky that we managed to book her today. Because everything revolves around the model and the way she looks and how elements like hair and makeup kind of come together with her appearance, um, it's the same thing for lighting. So what we'll do today is we'll have a look at a few different modifiers um, used on my main light to really find the light that looks the best on her, her skin, her makeup, her hair. Uh, it's just that final piece of the puzzle, that kind of glue that holds all the other elements together. My favorite shoot is a shoot where I have creative freedom over the whole thing. And I think if you ask any creative, they would tell you the same thing. When they're given freedom over most, if not all elements of a shoot, that's where they shine and they come alive. So they can showcase their vision um, and shoot something that is really true to, to them, to what they love. Uh, so even a day like today is, you know, my dream shoot. I just get to photograph a face that I love in a way that I love it and um, I love it. <laughs> my kit bag usually um, comprises of my camera. I do have a backup camera, but I always use my Canon 5D Mark IV as my main camera. And I, I have a range of lenses, but all of my beauty shoots are with the same lens. That's the one I will be using today. That's the Canon 100mm macro lens. And uh, I love this combination. It's beautiful definition. The macro lens allows me to focus really close to the subject, which is really nice to do for like tight beauty crops or even macro beauty shots. Um, so that's, uh, you know, as far as camera goes. In terms of lights, um, I have uh, Profoto B10X Plus with me today, which is a wireless um, kit, which is uh, lovely to use even in the studio, because that means we're, we don't have to be careful stepping over cables. Uh, and sometimes in studio, you can have quite a lot of light units, so minimizing cables is always a good thing. Today, I will be using two lights, that's the idea. That's the plan. We'll see what happens when we get there. Uh, and I've got a range of modifiers. I have a white beauty dish, I have a smallish rectangular stuff box, and I've got a deep silver umbrella. So these are modifiers that I love. I've also got a um, really big five foot octa that it's one of my favorite ones that's also there ready to go just in case but I think that amongst these three ones that I've just listed I will find my main modifier that will go on my main light and I am waiting for my model to be ready to come on set to really set 
on one modifier to go on my main light. Obviously, each of these modifiers will give me a different quality of light, and that's exactly what I want to see. I want to find a lighting, a quality of light that works really well with the skin, with the type of makeup that the makeup artist has applied. If it's matte or glossy, it might need a different quality of light to really um, showcase that. And in this case, because the model and the makeup were the kind of starting points of the shoot, those take priority today and the lighting kind of works around them. On other shoots, it could be the opposite. You might want to start from the lighting if you want a very you know, complex lighting setup, colorful perhaps, and then all the other elements will follow. So it really depends. Um, so yeah, that's what we're working with today. So we'll, we'll see when the model gets on set what we end up working and choosing. Definitely the ability to tether um, is really important. So I do tether on every shoot. And I think with beauty photography, I find it even particularly important because Beauty is made up of details, so if you're not able to really see those details because your camera screen is so small and you would have to zoom in every single time and you know try and see the imaging sections, um, then obviously that, that's a lot harder. When you have your image on a nice big screen, it makes everything easier even for the rest of your team to be able to see what you're seeing, what you're shooting, and to be able to then tweak and make adjustments, and that's, that's key to a successful beauty shot. So definitely the ability to tether. Um, definitely megapixels are important to a certain extent, but the lens for me is even more important because even with the same amount of megapixels, two different lenses can give you a completely different um, quality of image. Uh, so, and that's why I really like my 100mm. I love this lens even on my previous camera that had half the megapixels that this one has. It just looked really good even there. I have uh, different uh, light units that I might use on different occasions, um, but the power that I get from these lights is the same that I get from my D1s that are the kind of more standard studio lights, still pro photo, but kind of cabled. Um, and now that I have these, I would just take these. They're lighter to carry, they're just, you know, they cable free, they're just really easy to use. Uh, before, I used my D1s, and now if I need extra lights, I, I will throw my D1s in the mix. I will still get 500 watts of power, you know, from them, which is great. Um, in terms of camera, it's the same. So regardless of where I shoot, indoors, outdoors, and to be honest, 99% of my work is in studio, so it's all about finding the kind of kit that works for you in this setup. I really like lights that are um, somehow portable-ish, um, as sometimes you may use studios that don't have kit or you know you prefer to bring your own kit. I think as photographers we tend to acquire quite a bit of kit with the passing of years. Um, so it is sometimes nice to use the kit that you're used to uh, and kind of take it with you. So the more portable, lightweight, you know, well packed in a little lightweight bag, the lights are, uh, the easier they are to use. Um, I also really like lights that are consistent um, and you know that fire every time that's not always a given so a light that fires every time a light that is solid a bulb that will last and doesn't have to be replaced after six months these are all really important things because you want to be focused on other things when you are on shoots so you would want your kit to be doing its job without you having to fiddle with it taking you behind the scenes to one of my beauty shoots. We are at Sour Fair studio in Norwich. I've got uh, an amazing model and a makeup artist here with me and we're aiming to capture a selection of beauty portraits, ideally to shoot three hair and makeup looks that can work really well together, that are not too similar, um, but work really well together as a series. And we have uh, specifically Instagram in mind for this shoot, so and that's why we're aiming for three looks so that we've got a good selection for our Instagram feed. So I've got my two lights today. I'm aiming for a two light setup. And um, I've got my Profoto B10X Plus to use. And uh, so first thing, I'm just going to set up my units on my stands. These ones don't have cables, which is brilliant. And the next thing I'll do is set up my modifiers and then I'll have to um, have a, a play with my modifiers, test them on my model and really see which one I want to settle uh, on for my main light especially. So for now, we'll just get these ones all ready to go. These are battery powered. 
just these little guys here, so they don't need any cables, but they do come with cables, so if you do want to use them that way, that's fine. But it's really, really good. Obviously, it's really brilliant to not have cables when you're shooting on location, but I think a lot of people don't realize how good it is not to have cables in the studio as well, because there's usually a lot of cables around, there's extensions, there's um, lights, and there's your computer plugged in, so it's really brilliant to have a, like a clean, tidy floor. These are all my, my favorite ones. But before I choose one, I really want to see what the model looks like. Today, it really is all about her. It's, um, it's kind of a, a beauty portrait. So we are starting from the subject. We're starting from the makeup. These are the focus of our shoot. And um, so I, although I have an idea what lighting setup I want to do, I always do before I shoot, but I always really like to see on the model with that hair and makeup, what really looks good on the day. First one up, it's a white beauty dish. I love these on beauty shoots and portraits as well um, as a main light. It's lovely, it's soft, but it's defined and crisp enough at the same time so that you don't lose the detail of the skin, the detail of the makeup, uh, which is obviously always a plus in beauty photography. Uh, so this might be my main modifier, but I've also got this which is a really good one, which is a very large, deep silver umbrella. And the light that these two will give us is very different. Um, this is also really brilliant for beauty. It's a very crisp light, much harsher than the white beauty dish, but it can work really well with the, the right face, the right bone structure. And this is why it's really hard to settle on one um, really before seeing what the subject looks like on set. So I'm going to keep my options open. And then I've got this one, which we have to set up. And this is a small softbox, just a simple rectangular softbox. As well, really lovely light on its own, used as a main light, very soft. Uh, very soft shadows, which again can work really beauty beautifully on beauty. Uh, but at the same time, this light, uh, this modifier is also really good to use as a second light. So whenever you have already settled on a first light, whichever that is, if you need a little bit more fill, if you need to soften some shadows, just add a little bit of light anywhere, then this is really good because it's really soft, focuses the light in a specific portion of your, sh on the, of your um, subject, and um, it's really lovely for that. So I have a feeling I might use this as a second light. So a, um, a white modifier is always going to give us um, a softer light and simply because the light coming out of the, of the bulb um, bounces around the white part of the modifier, especially in a, in a beauty dish. That's what exactly what it's meant to do. So the light is supposed to be coming out here, just behind this disc, but it's actually blocked by the white disc and forced to bounce around the white part of the modifier. And by doing that, it softens, diffuses. Um, so a white modifier will almost always give you a um, softer effect than a silver one. So if we were to compare white beauty dish with, against a silver beauty dish, the white one will always give you a softer result. And this is why I really like my white one. On the other hand, this silver umbrella, being silver, will give us a harsher light. That's what it's meant to do. And that's also why we love it. It's because it's so different to this. That's exactly why I want to compare them before choosing. On Profoto lights, it's just really easy to switch modifiers. It's just a really easy kind of clamp setup. You just pop this on and off really quickly without, without risking to uh, you know, damage any lamp or any light. Um, yeah, any, any, any bulb, because there's nothing exposed. So it is really easy to switch them on and off. And that's why I just take a few minutes to set them up. Even if I set up one extra one that I might not use, I prefer to do that before. And then when I get here, I can just quickly swap them. Uh, and, you know, just my favorite one. I um, purposely brought with me a kind of a normal height stand for my main light. This, I'm assuming, is going to be high level, so I want to stand that it's sturdy and obviously goes high enough. 
This other one, on the other hand, I, I've, got a, I've got a big stand that I can use instead of this small one, but this small one is really good for clamshell kind of style setups, whereas we've got one light at the top, which would be our main light, and the second light goes right underneath. So you need a stand that is kind of low enough to allow you to have that light to go under your main, and this is brilliant for that. Now we'll get the laptop and the camera set up for tethering. So I always shoot tethered. It's, um, it's life-changing for me. Uh, it took a while to get used to at first uh, because it's not always easy to um, accept the fact that everyone on set can see exactly what you're seeing in the privacy of your camera. But it's um, essential on shoots, I think, of any kind, especially on sh in shoots like today where we have got also a makeup artist that needs to be able to see what I'm shooting so that she can make any necessary changes. Uh, and for myself, because it is not the same seeing an image very small on the camera screen um, as opposed to having it nice and big on here. So it is definitely something I like to do every time. So today I will be using my go-to kind of camera setup for beauty which is, I've got my Canon 5D Mark IV and my 100mm macro lens from Canon as well, which is um, really good for beauty. It's got a really good definition. It's macro, so it allows you to move and focus really close to the subject, which is really ideal for these kind of shots. Um, and at the same time, you don't have to be super, super close to your subject so that it's uncomfortable for them to, you know, be so close to you. Um, I really love this combination. So all my beauty shoots are currently shot with this gear. I will tether using Capture One. So I'm going to go ahead and open it and start a new session. Get my camera connected. And then as soon as we are kind of set up around here, I'll want to go and check on the hair and makeup, have a chat with the model, tell her a little bit more about what we're doing today, what kind of posing I'm kind of expecting from her so that she, she's got a, an idea of what we're doing and starting point, something to work with. So today we want to get perhaps uh, two or perhaps three beauty looks. We'll see what we have time for, but the idea is the subject, subject's face, subject eyes. That's the focus of the shoot. And we have chosen some makeup looks that are um, fairly natural, but just really enhance the subject's natural beauty. That's exactly what you want to do in portraits and in beauty as well. Uh, even if your makeup uh, or your hair or that your lighting sometimes, even if those are your starting point, the the priority is always that they look good on the subject that you've chosen. So all of these elements, although they're very important in a way, they're kind of secondary to the subject looking amazing. Uh, so this is exactly why we've chosen looks that we think can work well with the subject's face. And this is also why we want to make sure that we choose a light and a modifier that works really well with her. So we're going to see that once she gets on set. We are going to be shooting quite tight crops, um, so I won't really see much of this backdrop, but I wanted to choose a color that I know that I, um, that I love, and that, that's what I want to end up with anyway, even if it's just a tiny little bit of it around the model's hair. I um, love this color, works really well with most skin tones, especially slightly darker skin tones, which is um, what we're working with today. So this is going to be lovely. So we are aiming to shoot not too far from this backdrop because the farther from it we go and the darker that will appear in pictures, unless we obviously light that separately, which won't be doing today. So we will be positioning the subject I'm expecting fairly close to the backdrop and then building our lighting setup around that. Move this one around here and I think I will end up with this fairly high up, a little bit tilted down towards the model's eyes and then we'll see exactly when she gets here based on her height 
and also based on which modifier we go for, because obviously if we end up going for the giant umbrella, we might need to tilt the height and the direction of this light. But for now, I would say we, we're good to go. So what we'll do now is go and have a peek in the makeup room. So um, I've got a mood board for today. Um, I would always make a mood board before a shoot and that sometimes is for me. So it could be a posing mood board, a lighting mood board, sometimes is also for the rest of the team. So in this case, we've made a, like a hair and makeup one just to give us an idea of what general direction we're following, the kind of uh, type of looks that we're going for, sometimes even the order of looks that we're going for, because sometimes in a shoot you might find that it is easier to start with the makeup and then kind of progress from there as opposed to starting with another one and then having to undo and start again. Um, so this gives everyone the opportunity to see, agree, uh, and make sure that we're all on the same page. And also gives the model an idea of what we're doing, which is always a good thing. <laughs> um, How are you, Octavia? So like we were saying earlier, uh, what we are aiming for today is this kind of kind of cropped beauty shot. Okay. It really is all about your beautiful face and it's all about that connection, you know, eyes to camera. Yeah. Uh, you, you do have lovely fingers and hands, so we might try and get that in okay. the poses, just yeah. one hand. Um, mm -hmm. That's kind of, that actually gives you also an idea of what kind of poses we're looking mm -hmm. for, just kind okay. of typical kind of beauty thing but not obviously I'll direct you as well and um, I think I think that's it so I'm going to look I'm going to try a few different positions just to see what I can get from this modifier um, before I then switch to another one so that I know um, exactly what this one is giving me and I can compare it to the next one that we'll try So my top light is all right now. So what I'll do is I'll add this second one in. It's, a, it's possible to use a reflector for this purpose as well instead of another light, but there is much more versatility with using a light because we can choose power. We don't have to hold it on a uh, pretty low power because this one needs to only be a feel. So we're going to position this one as in line with the first one as we can. It's not too key as this light will kind of diffuse and spread out anyway. And we want to point this towards the model face from the bottom. And what this does is essentially fills in any shadows that this first light has created under the nose, under the chin, to just soften up the whole setup. Massive difference. So what we can do, we can actually just move it back a little. Um, I was having a really good kind of top and bottom light, but because I wanted my lights to be really close to the subject, because the closer the light is and the softer it looks, I really wanted that softness. I was missing just a little bit of uh, of light onto this side of the subject. Um, I could have worked around it by pulling these lights back, but as I said, I didn't want to compromise on the softness, so I prefer to leave the lights where they were, knowing that I could have used a polyboard on this size, that was an easy fix. So that polyboard is now going to catch some of this light and kind of bounce it back towards the side of the model that looked darker earlier. And it's actually doing an amazing job, so I actually have to now slightly lower the intensity of these two to, to compensate for the extra light that we're getting now. And this is looking very nice now. I might just drop this a little as I drop the top one as well. Shooting from my little window here. Capture One is my go-to tethering software because it's really, it's able to handle a quick burst of big raw files really well compared to other softwares. So you won't have to pose 
to allow the files to kind of be, you know, transparent to the computer. Um, so it's really good. Like you don't have to work around it. It just does what it does while you're doing your thing, which is brilliant. Very nice. I might try and give it a little bit more. I really like the backdrop color as well at this distance that we're at because it's um, it is pretty light and creamy. Looks really nice might actually change my white balancing camera as well. Warm it up just a little bit. I'm working with a shutter speed 160th of a second today and normally when I work in studio that's the speed that I am set on. Working in studio we don't really need to change the shutter speed, we are set on a number so that we kind of block out any ambient light, any continuous light that you've got going on from ceiling light um, and then the power of the flash gives us all the light we need so with the fast shutter speed we're overpowering any other light that could be kind of intrusive in our shoot. F14 allows me to get everything sharp essentially even as i am focusing quite close to the subject even if i take a macro shot it would allow me to for instance while i focus on the eye still get the tip of the nose or the lips sharp because the the closer you move to the subject and the closer you move to your focal point and the more the effect of the aperture and aperture blur kind of enhance so for very close-up shots it's really useful to work with a very narrow aperture so that you can ensure that everything that you need in focus will be. I'm also going to lock I'm going to lock my um, aperture wheel because I always end up by mistake kind of uh, moving it with my finger so this way it's set on 14 and it's not going to move until I decide to. That's lovely, so I might give it just a little less power to the one below. So I definitely want it to feel like my light comes from the top mainly anyway, and I don't want it to look like there is a light underneath. I just want it to feel more kind of diffused naturally. Touching up the makeup a little because depending on the light, it will show more or less glossy. So then once we know the light that we're settling with, um, then we can, you know, make the last adjustments to make it look really perfect in this light. Maybe let's leave one, the one that's down, that looks really nice. And if you can do nose to me, so really kind of eyes to camera, and yeah, that's nice. And then just have the play with that hand, just keep that kind of head position and just move the hand around. So see, this is our third uh, makeup change for the day. And we have kind of built up the makeup changes. So we started from a slightly more natural look and then kind of built up with the second one. And this is the last one. So it's the kind of fullest look. Um, and we've gone for looks that work well together, but not too similar, not too different, which is not always an easy thing to do, but it is easy when you have a talented uh, hair and makeup artist. And, um, Yes, we are leaving the light the same because we want a consistent uh, light, kind of, we want a consistent mood and vibe, so we're keeping the light the same. And uh, let's see how we can shoot this one. So what I'll do after today is I'll go and get my files, import them in Photoshop, and that's where I'll do all of my editing. My editing will consist of a few key steps. Uh, with this, this being beauty photography, uh, making sure that any distracting elements and skin or spots or stray hairs that weren't supposed to be there are removed. And I'll go and announce perhaps some lovely highlights that naturally occurred with the makeup, on the lips from the gloss. And I will go and also um, color grade perhaps the shot to just either warm it up or cool it down a bit, depending on what the skin tone needs, what works well with all the tones of the makeup. A um, little bit of general contrast and, um, and that'll be it. If you have been inspired by what you've seen today and you get to create anything of your own, uh, you can hashtag WexHowTo on Instagram so we get to see what you've been up to. And thanks for watching.